Geneva and welcome back to Holo Holo. We continue our look at several of the Asian and Asian Pacific films screening at this year's Los Angeles Asian Pacific Film Festival. And joining us today is a filmmaker who was named from CNN as one of the people who rock and whose latest project, a documentary, Jake Shimabukuro, Life on Four Strings, continues to gain much praise and attention. Filmmaker Tadashi Nakamura, welcome. Thanks, thanks, thanks for having me. <laughs> Congratulations on all of the success of the film. I hear it's already sold out for the LA Asian Pacific Film Festival. <laughs> yeah, well, pre-sale, pre-sale sold <laughs> pre out, but they'll, yes. they'll have tickets uh, at the door, so yeah. definitely, definitely still show up. And yes, and I'm guessing that they're probably going to have another screening fingers are crossed <laughs> hopefully yeah that'd be great that'd be great now for those that don't know who is jake shimabukuro uh well jake shimabukuro is um to me one of the the premier virtuosos of our time and and of our generation yeah. uh who happens to play a four string instrument called the ukulele mm -hmm. um, but he's also from uh, hawaii he's japanese american and um the film's pretty much about uh, his his rise to fame as well as uh, we followed him for the last two and a half years which a lot of things both professionally and personally happened to him. Yeah. Now, how did you get introduced to Jake, or how did you first hear about him? Well, actually, um, the film was, uh, I was commissioned to direct the film by the Center for Asian American Media, mm -hmm. uh, which is based in San Francisco. And so the producer of the film, uh, Don Young, he, um, I'd worked with him previously uh, with my other films, but um, he's the one who gave me a call and said, you know, we have this great opportunity. Uh, to do a, a, a full-length film on Jake, would you like to do it? So I jumped at it. Yeah. So when you first heard him perform, what did you think? What was your initial reaction? Oh, I mean, like <laughs> like most people, you're just kind of blown away. Yeah. Um, right. Yeah. Because really, I mean, I think it's not like I listen to the ukulele in my car, uh -huh. you know, when I work out, or yeah. you know. And so I think everyone has preconceived notions of what the instrument sounds like, whether it's good or bad. Yeah. Um, but either way, Jake kind of shatters that, whether it's you know, the, the style, uh, the type of music, um, but also, too, just the way he attacks the instrument. Yeah, he just has no barriers when it comes to, I mean, it's more than just, you know, the traditional Hawaiian music that you hear. He does the jazz, the pop, the rock. It's amazing. Yeah. No, <laughs> now, what was that experience like of following him for two and a half years? It was great. You know, I think uh, before the project started, I had never met Jake. Mm -hmm. And, you know, of course, by the end of it, we're good friends now. <laughs> Um, but, you know, one thing was that he's constantly touring. Uh, it's not like he has a summer tour and then he records. I mean, he's literally re at least on tour um, on the road 10 months out of the year. Yeah. So uh, wow. we weren't able to follow him the whole time. Mm -hmm. So we would kind of um, jump on his tour for about two weeks here and there. Right. And then just being around him, you know, one, just keeping up at his pace. I was exhausted <laughs> after two weeks. Yeah, I was going to say 10 months out of the year, he and then he goes home. And I'm sure he's also performing at home and still writing. It's like, when do you take a break? <laughs> yeah, he really does. And yeah, again, like you said, when he's home, he, he's even busier yeah. because he has, you know, um, public appearances yeah. or commercials to shoot. So yeah, he's, I mean, I definitely, I was lucky to be around someone who's not only so talented, but also has such a hard work ethic. Yeah. Now you, this isn't your first project, because I know you've done a couple of other documentaries. Um, your parents are filmmakers. Tell me about how you got started. Yeah, both of my parents. <laughs> um, I'm kind of a second generation documentary filmmaker. Uh, both my parents, uh, Robert Nakamura and Karen uh -huh. Ishizuka. My d dad's a director and my mom's a producer and writer. And so, um, yeah, I kind of grew up watching them do their yeah. thing. And it wasn't until um, actually I got, I was an undergrad at UCLA mm -hmm. and I took um, my dad's class, uh, which was uh, an <laughs> ethno communications class. What was that like, taking your dad's class? Yeah, I mean, I, I, like anyone, I, the main reason I, I took it was because I needed a GPA booster. <laughs> so, you know, I kind of thought, you know, my dad will give me an uh -huh. A, and I'd slide did through. He? he did, yeah. yeah. I don't know if I earned it or not, but um, I'm sure you did, yeah. Mr. People Who Rock by yeah. CNN. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Tell me how you got the CNNs being one of CNNs People Who Rock. Well, that was, um, yeah, that was. It was kind of random. Um, uh -huh. It was great, but it, uh, in 2008, uh, my second sh 
film, which is a short documentary mm -hmm. called Pilgrimage, uh, was selected to the Sundance Film Festival. Wow. And so I was, um, me and another woman were the youngest people at the Southern. festival that year. Only 27 years old at that time, yeah, right? Yeah, <laughs> so, um, so yeah, and then, you know, it was one of those things of, um, they said, you know, they'd like, that, that, I guess there's a show, mm -hmm. and we did a little segment, and so that was, you know, my first on-air <laughs> national kind of interview. Now, how do you decide which documentaries to do or to tackle? Um, well, you know, I think for me, I've, the reason I got into making films was to really feel like to document Asian American stories yeah. and to kind of tell them from a view from within the community instead of without. Um, so that's how I did my first three. Mm -hmm. um, but I think for this film it was actually a little different because mm -hmm. instead of um, me kind of developing it from the beginning, uh, it was it was somewhat developed and then I jumped on to direct it. And but at the yeah. same time, you know, be, Jake being an artist, being mm -hmm. Japanese American, um, it kind of fell very much in line with my, my other work. Yeah. <laughs> Is there a future project in the works that you're doing? Um, yeah, well, I think with, with Jake, I still would love to do another, whether it's more of a live concert, mm -hmm. whether for DVD or for, um, you know, for broadcast, just because yeah. we got along really well. And uh, my production company that I work with, Polypu Documentary Films mm -hmm. out in Hawaii, um, I would just love to work with them yeah. uh, again. Um, but at the same time, uh, we are developing some other projects. Um, uh, there's currently a project in development on a muralist named Estria, who's um, from Hawaii. Um, and he's actually been in the mainland for a while, and now he's returning to do a whole project oh. on um, murals based on the traditional meles or the Hawaiian chants. Ooh, I can't wait to see that one. You're going to have to come back and promote that one. Okay, I will, yeah. <laughs> now, for more information on Jake Shimabukuro, Life on Four Strings, where can we go? You can go to lifeonfourstrings.com, mm -hmm. and there you can actually, we'll link you up to all the Facebook, okay. the Twitter pages, as well as you can sign up. Uh, to be on the mailing list, so okay. when the DVD does come out, we'll, we'll get, let you know. Cool, and it is screening on May 4th, right? May 4th at 7 o'clock. <laughs> okay, thank you so much All for right. stopping by. Thank you. And for more information on Jake Shimabukuro, Life on Four Strings, you can check the website below. Again, it is screening at the LA Asian Pacific Film Festival on May 4th. We will be right back.